Welcome back to Duckman Cycles at VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> Bet you thought I was going to laugh, didn't you? <laughs> We're back today with my 1973 Beetle that's behind me here. And uh, we've got a new problem that this has started to do. And it's actually a very common problem. And I would say that almost every single one of my Volkswagens, air-cooled that is, that I've ever owned, have all done exactly the same thing. And that is, when you turn the key to the start position, it doesn't want to start. And if you go and you check all continuity, and you check all the voltages, you check the battery, everything is fine, including the solenoid, because you can take it and hotwire it right to the starter, and it will start up. But it will not start from the key. Well, the reason for that is, Volkswagen wiring usually gets old, and it just doesn't carry the amount of current that it needs to. The switch could also be the culprit. You could try changing out the ignition switch, but generally speaking, it is the wiring. And there is a solution for that, and the solution's really simple. And we'll show you right here. So make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button so that we get an update every time I upload a new video. And please don't forget to join my Facebook group. Do a search for Duckman Cycles VW Garage and join the group page. If you want to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. If you have a question about this, this project or some of the other ones that I've got or anything else, you can either ask it to me an email or you can post it publicly on the Facebook group page. If I don't answer you, one of my 300 new group friends will. And yes, we've got about 300 people there now, so thank you very much you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you everybody for joining me in my group page. Thank you everybody for subscribing. We're almost up to 15,000 subscribers. We'll probably be rolling over that in the next few days. So thank you very much once again. I appreciate it. Stick around. More to come. Bah! Well, we're back. New month, new look. That's right. Beginning of the month, I always take up a shave and I cut my hair. And uh, you probably tell I look a bunch of years younger than I normally do. And I'm sitting here right now in my 73 Beetle about to do some work to show you how to install that, uh, what they call the hot start relay. Some people also know it as the hard start relay. But hot start, hard start, I think that's splitting hairs. It really doesn't matter to me what the difference is. The fact is, it fixes your problem. So this is how to install one. And right here, I've got a friend of mine little bit in the bottle normally I wouldn't be doing this from inside of a car but because this car is in my backyard and I'm not going to be driving it anytime soon have a sip once in a while it's good for you Ooh, I'm about finished off on that one and uh, it's kind of a kind of a girly beer it's very candied flavor it tastes like uh, Girl Scout Samoa cookie it's really good we're gonna show you how to install the hot start relay and it gets installed under the back seat back here so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to of course pull out your back seat now this applies to all air-cooled Volkswagens other than buses. If you have a Type 1 Beetle, if you have a Carmen Ghia, if you have a Thing, if you have a Type 3, pretty much any Volkswagen that's built on a pan chassis where the body is removable, this is a solution for you. You can also do it on buses, but buses you'll have to do it in a different location. You'll have to get up underneath the car to actually install one, so we're going to cover it from the inside of the vehicle right here on a Type 1 Beetle. Let's go ahead and jump in the back and I'll show you what we're talking about. Now up here under the back seat, of course you'll find your shift linkage here. Normally there's a cover on that. This one is actually lacking that. Your battery is over here on the passenger side. And on the driver's side, if you have a later model, you'll find the regulator is over here. In between, in the floor, there's always a red wire. And this red wire actually goes back to your starter solenoid. And this comes from the key switch and runs along that wire all the way over to the starter, which is connected to the transmission underneath the car. What we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, disconnect this wire and I measured 12 volts at this. And also, if I take this wire and touch it to the battery, it starts. I mean, <laughs> obviously there's a problem somewhere somewhere in that wiring with carrying amperage. So it's a problem with uh, carrying amperage, like I said before. And the way to fix that is really quite simple. We need to install a relay. And relays are readily available. As cheap as about $5 to as much as about 10 It's four pins on it. And we're gonna show you exactly how these are supposed to be hooked up and what's the easiest way to make this happen. All right, this is a relay. And for those of you that don't know what a relay is, a relay is a switch. And you can see by the little dart diagram right there, that little arm that closes. Now how this works is this is a coil. And when this section of the coil gets energized, 
this switch closes. So the trick is here, since these relays require very, very little amperage, is to have the ignition key switch will power up this coil, which will then close that switch. And the switch will be routed directly from the battery back through to the solenoid. So that way it bypasses all of that wiring that goes through the entire car. So all the old wiring is long bypassed and avoided. Now what you're gonna need is you're gonna need, of course, a simple four pin relay. You're gonna need some electrical connectors. You're gonna need some kind of self-tapping screw. We'll get into that in a minute. You're gonna, of course, need some wiring. Make sure you get something of a, of a fairly decent gauge. It doesn't need to be too awfully big, but it needs to at least match the wiring that's in here on the Volkswagen. So make sure you've got something at least that big. First thing we're gonna do is come under here to that red wire that's underneath that back seat and disconnect it. Okay, this wire that comes out of it, you can then connect to what's going to be pin number 87 on the relay. Now each one of these pins is, is numbered. I'm not sure if the camera can see that or not, but uh, yeah, each one is numbered. So plug that into number 87. That's our first connection. Easy as that. All right, put that aside. We wanna start jumping into some wiring now. Now the first thing we're gonna to need to do is make a ground wire. Now I happen to have an open connector on the end of this wire. And the ground wire doesn't need to be very long because it's gonna to go to chassis. So we're actually going to cut it right about here. That way we only have about oh, six to eight inches of wire right here, no problem. Strip some of that back, twisty twisty. Take your electrical connector, slip it on in there. Now you can, and I recommend, that you solder this. But if you're not proficient at soldering or if you have a correct crimping tool, you can actually get by by crimping these ends on there. But I feel that soldering is always better. But because we're making a video, I don't have time to do the soldering thing. It's gonna make the video way too long and it's gonna fill the car up with smoke and I don't feel like breathing that crap today. Okay, we got a crimped wire just like that, okay? Now we're gonna make a new wire. This wire needs to go from here, which is the uh, what goes off to your ignition switch, to wherever you plan on putting your relay. Now I plan on putting the relay right here. I'm actually gonna attach it right to the tunnel right here. So we need to make this wire just long enough to get it to there. Add a few extra inches in case you need to move it around. Cut it, now you've got your wire. Now strip your ends off, twist these guys up real nice. Put these wires together just like this. As you can tell, I've done this a lot of times before because just about every Volkswagen I've ever owned had this problem, except for the Fastback. And this is actually, the problem just started on the 73 Beetle. Uh, the last time I took it out, it was getting hard to start. Sometimes it would start, sometimes it wouldn't. After checking all the voltages and everything, everything was good, it just it did not want to start. All right, there's our wire. We're gonna wanna plug the one end into the wire that's down on the pan here. This is the one that comes back from the ignition switch. And now we're gonna wanna connect it to the coil on the relay. Currently have the ground on 86, so we're gonna hook, this is the power in, or switch in, I should say, to 85. Okay, we got one more wire left that we need to hook up. This is the one that needs to get the 12 volts from the battery. And this is critical that we get actually fresh, clean power that's not going through anything else in the system. Okay, there's two places we can plug into. We can plug directly into the battery positive terminal over here, or we can come back over here and we can connect it to the positive on the voltage regulator. Both ways are correct. The shortest path, we get it to the battery, which is right over here, and using a connector similar to this one, some kind of horseshoe connector or a closed loop, you can actually put it on the bolt to the positive side of the battery. Yes, make sure it's the positive side, not the negative side. Negative side, this thing won't work. So we're gonna wanna make one more wire, and I have another wire here that has a, a horseshoe end on it. This one here, and that's what we're gonna connect to the positive side on the battery. So we're gonna wanna make sure that it's long enough, and that should get us from the battery terminal back to the relay. So we'll strip the end off of this. Okay, we wanna crimp that on there. This crimping tool is really nice. I got this when I used to work at Radio Shack years ago. 
Yes, I'm a Radio Shack alumni. I was actually there about eight years. I worked in a store, but I mostly installed DirecTV satellite systems, as well as Dish Network, C-Band systems, pretty much any kind of satellite system. I did cable TV wiring for the home. I did a little bit of computer networking and uh, lots of telephone stuff back in the days when everybody had a landline. Speaking of telephone, you probably heard that chime. That was my work phone, and my work phone can uh, screw off for a little while. I'm actually on their clock today, but... Um, I've got a project I need to finish. But we're going to take that last and remaining wire and we're going to connect it to the remaining pin that's on here, which is number 30. And we're going to check our diagram real quick, okay, and it's going to fed off to the relay, which is on 87. Now, 86 and 85 are nothing but the ignition switch and ground. That's what closes that coil. Once that coil gets hot, the switch closes and it powers up the solenoid. Really simple stuff. There's not much to it. You take this one terminal that we made for the power, which is currently going at 30, and put it on a bolt, which is on the battery. And I already have that loose, but uh, the bolt is loose on there, so that's ready to go. And this is all ready and hooked up, but the last thing we got to do is we have to create a ground so we can mount this sucker right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a self-tapping screw, just like this. Here's somebody on their two-stroke bicycle here in the neighborhood. You can probably hear that on the camera. And we're going to run that right in here. This is a self-tapper, by the way. There it is. That will provide our mount for the coil. And as a wonderful side effect, it's also going to be the ground for the ground lug. So that will go right on there just like that. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. and then run your screw in. Here it is. All right, get out all the excess, excess wire that we're not using. Throw that outside here. Get all these tools out. Take your terminal box. Don't dump this sucker out if you have one of these. If you dump these things out, you'll be crying the blues for about the next 20 minutes as you sort the damn things. My keys to my other car and my phone. Get those out from underneath here. Now you can do a little bit of, oh nice, accidentally pulled out the battery terminal wire. I'll have to put that back on before we do anything. You could do a little bit of cable management under here with some zip ties and neaten this stuff up. But for the sake of this video, I think I've shown you enough to get you to understand how this operates. So the next thing we need to do is uh, get up front and turn that key and see if it works. After we fix this wire, of course. I pulled out of the damn battery terminal. <laughs> No big deal, we'll be back in a minute. All right, we've got that battery terminal fixed. I got the wire plugged back into it. Now, if I made this project look kind of easy, that's because it is. <laughs> There's really not all too much to this to make this work. It's really quite simple. If it looked easy, like I said, it's, it's because I've done it a million times before. But it really shouldn't take any more than about 15 minutes. If you have all the parts and all the tools in hand and ready to rock and roll, you should be able to have this running in no time at all. So anyways, we're good. Let's go up front. Let's see what happens when we try to use this thing. Let's see what happens. There it is. She's running. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. And don't forget to join me on my Facebook page, Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. Join the group. We got almost 300 people that are discussing our projects, not just this project, but their own projects. These guys, my 300 friends that are on my Facebook page, they maintain that page. They put more stuff on there than I do, so you really need to check out what they're doing. And they have a big discussion going on about all kinds of different Volkswagen things, sometimes relating to my projects, sometimes completely of their own, unrelated to mine. Sometimes it's got motorcycle stuff. You really need to check out the Facebook page. Please, guys, go over to Facebook, type in Duckman Cycles VW Garage, join that group page. And always, if you'd like to email me, please email me at duckmancycles at duckshit.net. And check out my other YouTube channels, VV the Duck VV, Skeeter the Duck, and of course, Duckman Cycles. Subscribe to all of them so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. 
I've been hearing thunder on the horizon for about the last 10 minutes or so, and I mean, it's been getting louder and louder and louder, and I looked at the radar, and it's coming in from the east, backwards from how we usually see it. And there's the front right there. That is it. And we are about to get belted, something serious. So anyways, I'm gonna try to finish this thing up and wrap it up as soon as possible here. I gotta get everything parked inside. I gotta get the battery chargers and stuff back inside, get all my tools back inside. And hopefully, get the vehicles back inside so they don't get rained on. I don't like my old Volkswagens getting wet. And sure, of course, they were designed to get wet when they were brand new, but these cars are, you know, 40, 50 years old by now. And in the case of Eleanor, 62 years old. And uh, after all those years and having dealt with all the rust that they've dealt with, um, I don't think they deserve it anymore. So I don't get the cars wet whenever possible. I try to take care of them. I just heard somebody's transformer blow up. <laughs> and I'm seeing animals running around the neighborhood kind of fast here. Cats and squirrels and things. Everything is starting to take cover. The wind is starting to pick up out here. It's, it's starting to get serious. This, this is going to be something. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. It's not very big on the radar. But uh, we're about to get belted something serious. Oh, I don't know if you can see how different the sky is, but it's getting really, really dark gray. It was bright blue just a minute ago and it's starting to get black and and that wind is blowing and the temperature just dropped about 10 degrees we're still seeing the sun from that direction but the storm is actually coming from the reverse direction for once that's really out of the ordinary but with that hurricane spinning off of southwest florida right there i think it's around the fort myers area right now everything is turned around backwards hopefully this storm is going to hit mississippi and not me i mean i don't want to see the folks in Mississippi I've got some friends out there are really holy crap wow oh shit <laughs> fucking stick hit me in the face holy shit okay we gotta bring this car in and we gotta bring it in now I'm getting pelted with things and that shit hurts <laughs> wow that fucking hurt I just walked in through the back door and I mean I just walked in and the sky completely opened up. Timing couldn't have got any better than that. You know, it was coming down a little bit heavier just a few seconds ago, but I mean, yeah, everything is wet and it wasn't just, just minutes before. We already got branches down. Wind is blowing really good. This is not your normal summer afternoon Florida storm. Wonder if we'll have any more excitement with the uh, power wires doesn't look like it you know I haven't uploaded that video yet over on my other channel VB the duck VV the uh, tree after some significant rain for almost two week period started to sag because of course it's growing and it soaked up all the water and it started to push against the top power line and I forget what the voltage is on those somebody told me 2,000 somebody told me 10,000 but it's really high well the pine needles are starting to touch it and it caught fire and the tree started to burn like a son of a bitch. And of course, I'm not responsible for trimming that. I'm not supposed to get anywhere near those power lines. So I called the uh, 911 because all of my neighbors said, <laughs> we don't know who to call. So anyway, 911 was the answer. They called the fire department. The fire department called the power company and they came on out and they trimmed it off. And you can see those branches right there that are kind of dangly. Those are the ones they cut right off. And they're supposed to come back and cut the trim and uh, trim the branches back a little bit further, but uh, they have not yet, and it's been a few weeks. I guess there's not much of a high priority at this point because there's no longer a fire risk. But when I got home one day, it was making a loud buzzing sound when I got out of the car, and uh, I looked up and I thought it was that transformer because it came from that general direction. So I figured their transformer was about to blow up. And it would buzz, buzz, and then it would stop, and then it would buzz, buzz, and it would stop. And as the breeze was blowing, the tree branches were blowing into it, and I looked up, and all of a sudden there's just a poof, you know, and a, and a big poof of fire, and, and the branch started to just burn like a motherfucker. So, of course, I called 911, and I got them over here, and uh, by the time they got here, it had burned itself out, and they said, well, there's nothing we could do, bye, and they left. The power company got here about two hours later, and it was it was still burning. It would start burning and stop burning, start burning, stop burning. I just kept watching it. And finally, he cut off the limb, and uh, it's been fine since. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Anyway, thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll see you around next time. Happy Volkswagen love to everybody. <laughs>
I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up or not, but this is where the tree branch hit me. And it was about a foot long, and it came down like a javelin and just stuck me right in the, in the cheekbone. I mean, it hurt pretty bad. I mean, it's just a red mark. It didn't actually break the skin, but had that have hit me in the eye, it certainly could have been much more serious. But, um, yeah, that's what we're looking at. I, I think I'll live that. I mean, the duck man has dealt with much worse things before, so... <laughs> And if the camera heard that, that's thunder. We got a storm rolling in.